So my name's Taylor Rhodes. I am the executive director of Rocky Mountain Gun Owners. Uh, I'm not going to use that podium because they didn't build it for normal sized people. So uh, I'm not going to use that today. Um, who all in this room is a member of Rocky Mountain Gun Owners? Got a couple? Three, four, five? Yeah, okay. My goal is, is like, like Lucas said, to convert you all and make you all members. Um, so again, my name's Taylor Rhodes. Uh, I have I started with Rocky Mountain Gun Owners in 2018 as a contract lobbyist to fight against uh, the red flag gun confiscation bill uh, that was unfortunately rammed down our throats. Um, we did feel like in that year that there was a handful of Democrats, one of being Kerry Donovan, that could flip in the in the Senate. Uh, unfortunately, that did not happen, and that bill was passed and signed into law by Emperor Polis. Um, yeah, thanks for the laugh. Appreciate those. Um, so in addition to, uh, our work against, against red flag, we have been quite busy, uh, over the past year. You may have seen, uh, in, in 2021, uh, this, our state government allowed, uh, localities all the way down to your HOA, uh, to pass, uh, gun regulations, meaning in theory, your HOA could tell you that you could not own or possess a gun in your own home. Um, it is that nuts. Um, we have seen this, we have seen gun bills being passed in uh, places like Superior, Colorado. They were kind of the tip of the spear uh, on, on uh, passing assault weapons bans and exceeding magazine bans. They actually went further than the state the state ban right now is 10 uh, or 15, and they went down to 10. So why does that matter? So when they, when they passed this into law uh, in, in coordination with Boulder, uh, Louisville, uh, and Lafayette did not do it, but they were in coordination with them as well, uh, we sued in federal court uh, two weeks after they signed this into law. We, we sat down with our attorneys. And literally as we were sitting down speaking with our attorneys, the Bruin decision uh, was laid down. Does Who in this room knows what the Bruin decision is? Do I need to explain it? Okay, I will, I will explain it. So the Bruin decision was a landmark case. So we have five, well, four real landmark cases on guns in America right now. Uh, Bruin being the biggest. Uh, the Bruin decision essentially says that a government, no matter how big or how small, uh, they cannot implement gun control using the term, using the idea of intermediate scrutiny. What is intermediate scrutiny? Intermediate scrutiny is the idea that a judge could say that a assault weapons ban, a so-called assault weapons ban is legal because let's say 33% of mass shootings are done by an AR-15. They can no longer use that as a reasoning in their courts, um, their court decision. They now have to go off of the text, history, and tradition of the Second Amendment. Meaning, at the time of the founders, uh, what you know, were there a, a comparative, uh, you know, weapon involved? You know, what was the what was their tradition behind this? So, in our we we did file based on the Bruin decision in Superior, and what the judge wrote, which was extremely interesting to me, uh, although I am a nerd, um, he wrote that. The, the big term that you're going to hear in gun cases these days is common use. Um, so he wrote that an AR-15 is in fact in common use because there are more AR-15s in circulation today than America's most popular vehicle on the road, the Ford, Ford F-150, by a matter of three times. So, yes, of course. So there are three times as more AR-15s in America than there are... Uh, Ford trucks, which we think is a good thing. But um, <laughs> it was funny. I actually responded to someone on Twitter. They were like, I don't, and I tweeted essentially that. And they said, I don't know why you would want to own one of those, you know, you know, terrible, destructive weapons. And I was like, I agree. I would never want to drive a Ford. But <laughs> they didn't think it was as funny as I did. Um, but that brings us to where we are today. So, uh, a little over a week ago, uh, again, this is, this is really fresh. A little over a week ago, an unlikely ally in the Capitol called me and said that 
they were going to pursue, the legislature was going to pursue an assault weapons ban. That the assault weapons ban that they had seen uh, was going to go even further than California um, and even further than the Illinois ban that was uh, just passed a couple of days ago. And so I said, well, I got to see this. So we get, we get the bill, bill, uh, bill language. They were not happy about that. When politicians are doing things in the dark, they don't want you to see what they're doing in the dark. Um, and we exposed them on Twitter. Uh, I think the last time I checked, it was like, I don't know, 250,000 people had seen those, majority of being from Colorado. Uh, so they did not like that because their phone line started blowing up like the day that they were being inaugurated or uh, sworn in uh, at the Capitol. And that was supposed to be a big, joyous day. And their phone lines are blowing up because they have angry gun owners calling them which makes me happy. Um, one of my biggest uh, accomplishments, I would say, is, is being able to shut the Capitol down for a day because I jammed their fax line. If you ever want to fax the Capitol, it's a fun fact. I actually think they've changed it since then. But they, <laughs> the, the internet into the Capitol is one line in, one line out. And it can only support so much. And I called every Republican in the state of Colorado called and asked them to press one to be connected to their legislator, press two to fax their legislator. Well, more people wanted to fax than they did want to call, so we were able to shut the Capitol down for the day, which I thought was a great use of our money and the taxpayer dollars because they couldn't steal your freedom on that day. So going back to my point, I will go on tangents here. I'm a tad ADHD squirrel. Um, uh, so we'll go we'll go uh, back to the to the main point of why this matters. So, in the bill draft that that we did, uh, we did a complete analysis. Our attorneys did a complete analysis. This is not your grandfather's assault weapons ban. This does not just go after you know the AR-15s and AK-47s that they want you to believe is just in this bill. On. On our experts' opinion, um, we believe that 70% of guns in Colorado would become illegal overnight if this bill were to pass. This bill does, go, no, does not just go after those AK-47s and AR-15s. It goes after uh, many pistols. Actually, we think it goes after about 80% of pistols on the, on the market right now uh, because the bill states if it can take a... Uh, they call it a flash hider. It's a compensator. If it has a compensator uh, or a threaded barrel, it is illegal. Well, Glock has been making, comp you know, bar their compensators built into their barrels, has been for 15, 20 years. SIG is, has done the same thing. HK, the compensator is built into the barrel. Um, uh, Smith & Weston is moving towards doing that. Um, so it's going to outlaw many pistols, including the one on my hip. Um, so this is, and it's additionally going to go after shotguns. So if a shotgun has the same, um, the same criteria, a thread barrel or a um, compensator, it would then be illegal. In addition to if it had a pistol grip, it would then be illegal. So if you have a, a turkey gun or you just bought one of the new badass Benelli M4s, I'm sorry, your gun would then be illegal. So one of the things that uh, when we've looked at this, assault weapons bans that have been passed in states like California and in Maryland and Massachusetts and Hawaii, Hawaii actually has an assault pistol ban uh, that covers many of the same things that I just discussed. But um, all of those bills and all of those laws gave exceptions, gave ways to become compliant. This bill does not. Uh, this bill, it essentially says, on in 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 talking about rifles, um, you know, the, the, it's a laundry list. It talks about 50 BMGs all the way up to, um, you know, machine guns and and things of that nature. But it it literally says, this is how stupid these people are that are writing these bills. It literally says, if you can hold your hand to it and not be burned. It's literally what it says in the bill. It is illegal. So, And it also talks about partially covered or completely covered shrouds, which is your handguard. If it has either one of those, it would then be illegal. So in theory, you know, 90, 95% of rifles, as, unless it's a bolt action, it's going to be illegal. Um, under this under this bill, so let's talk about compliance. And if you were to choose to comply with this tyrannical law, 
So the bill gives a grandfather clause, but it's quite horseshit uh, in their grandfather clause. Their grandfather clause states that you have to have consistent ownership of that weapon. And not only do you have to have consistent ownership of that weapon, is you have to be able to prove that you purchased that weapon before the date of enactment. And their date of enactment is July 1st, 2023. So in, so in theory, I have an AR-15 that I, we were talking about this earlier, I have an AR-15 that I was given by my parents when I was 9 or 10 years old. I had good parents. Um, I was given an AR, and I learned to shoot, and I hunted with it, I hunted hogs with it, I've killed more deer than I know how to count with it. It, it. It's been a great rifle. Still use it to this day. That gun would become illegal. I don't have any paperwork on it. I don't have, I can't tell you where my parents bought it. I, I've had consistent ownership of it since, I don't know, I was nine years old, but I have no way to prove that. The, in the bill, it, it details a handful of ways that you can prove uh, when you bought it. However, our attorneys say that it's a lot of them are not going to hold up. They say that you can you can prove that you bought it before with a receipt, uh, with a proof bill of sale, uh, or really the only one that's going to hold up is your 4473. That's your background check. Uh, background checks in Colorado weren't made in, made law uh, until 2013. So if you bought a gun before then, tough luck. Um, I hate to say that, but that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, it is, it's going to outlaw, uh, and make you a criminal. So are they going to come to your house and knock on your door and ask if you have a so-called assault? We can't say assault rifle. We have to say assault weapon because again, a Glock could become an assault weapon under this bill. Um, are they going to knock on doors? I don't think so immediately. Um, I don't, I don't think so even in the long term. Well, how are they going to know that you have an assault weapon? So the way the bill reads is that, you know, police officers are going to be coerced into asking people when you're, they're pulled over, do you have an assault weapon in your vehicle? The way the bill reads is that you have to have it locked up if you're transporting it from uh, your house to a range. So let's say you have an AR, just because that's what people think of when they think of assault weapons. Let's say you have an AR, it's not locked up. Well, you're already in trouble because it's not locked up. You've, you've then just gotten yourself a class two misdemeanor. That means a $750 fine and a potential of up to 190 days in jail. Um, on top of that, you're going to get a civil penalty. It kind of depends on when you get this of how much it's going to be. They have a cutoff date. I think it's, I think it is December 31st of 2024. Uh, if it's before then, uh, you're going to get a thousand dollar fine. If it's after that date, you're going to get a $5,000 fine. Uh, this is not chump change. Uh, that is another rifle. Um, I mean, this is this is big money that we're talking about. So in theory, uh, you could be fined on your first offense, seven hundred and fifty or a thousand seventeen. Excuse me, a thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, if it's after that date of enactment, you're looking at uh, five thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, this is not small money. If a gun shop is caught selling a so-called assault weapon. Uh, their first offense is going to be a $100,000 fine for their first offense. For their second offense and everyone after that is a $250,000 fine. So in theory, if you were to sell six ARs in a day, you're looking at over a million dollars. Well, no, you're looking at, yeah, you're looking at over a million dollars in, in fines in, in a single day. Uh, Businesses can't sustain that. That's that's it's it's almost like they wrote this bill knowing that if you do this, you're going to you know be bankrupt for you know ever. Your gun shop is going out of business, uh, and you're no longer going to be um, you know a law-abiding citizen at that point. So on top of all of this craziness, uh, oh wait, there's more. They're talking about. Uh, other bills. So if that didn't get you pissed off, let me tell you about other things. So we know what that is in that bill because we've seen the draft. Uh, two years ago, they came together and started this Office of Gun Violence Prevention. 
uh, that uses three million dollars of your taxpayer money to lobby the own gov to lobby your own government to pass more gun control. Go figure. Um, that's where your tax dollars are going. Um, I did apply. Their executive director does make three hundred thousand dollars. I figured I'd be a really good executive director for them, especially for three hundred thousand dollars. I'd be really good taxpayer money, but I didn't get the job. They didn't call me back. I was very sad about that. But. They have come up with this list because now the gun Office of Gun Violence Prevention has said that they needed a gun violence caucus. So the Democrats have started a anti-gun caucus, uh, and they have come up with five other bills that they deem need to be passed immediately. The first of which is a 10-day waiting period. So let's say that the gun, uh, they have not banned the gun that you want to buy. Uh, let's say you want to buy a, a Tika T3, a bolt action rifle. Highly encourage you to do so, by the way. They're pretty sweet. I built one on a KRG chassis. We can talk more about it later. Um, let's say you want to buy a Tika T3 bolt action rifle. If you are legal, you pass your background check. Again, this is just what we've been told. So this is hearsay. Don't take my word as gospel. This is just what I've been told by legislators in the Capitol and their staff that you would have to pass your first background check. In 10 days, you could go back to the gun shop, pick up your weapon, and then you would have to pass another background check. So they're essentially doubling your background check. Uh, and presumably, you're going to have to pay for both background checks because they have a state-required fee of, I think it's $11 now, so you're, you're doubling your background check fee on top of that. So if that doesn't irritate you, I know we've got a few young guys in the room. We... Uh, the other bill that we have, have seen or that we have been told it has been filed is they are looking to raise the age uh, to purchase any weapon that is not illegal under their assault weapons ban uh, to 25. They are, uh, their argument is that you can't rent a car until you're 25, uh, so you shouldn't be allowed to own a gun. Um, that's, that's crazy to me. It's, you know, we're talking about rights versus a privilege. Uh, cars are privileges. Rights are not. Um, the, the interesting thing about, about, uh, about this argument is, A, it's already been struck down in federal court. We are prepared to sue on this as well. Um, it's been struck down in federal court, and because of the Bruin decision where it has to be looked at the text, history, and tradition, in theory, based on text, history, and tradition, you could argue that, 13-year-olds should be able allowed to own guns based on the text, history, and tradition. Um, if you want to go a little less extreme, you could say 15-year-olds. Aside from those two, you don't have much text, history, and tradition until modern age, um, which will, would not necessarily be looked at. So if, if those three haven't irritated you, oh wait, there's more. So they are looking to expand uh, red flag gun confiscation. So if you don't know what red flag gun confiscation is, in 2019 they passed a bill that says if you believe your neighbor or whoever is crazy and they are in danger to themselves or others, they can then call the um, police department and they would be required to come and seize your guns without due process first and you then have a, it's, I think it's 365 days to plead your case, and then they can hold your guns for up to two years. Uh, they're looking to expand on that even more. They're looking to expand on who can file those uh, red flag orders. And not only that, because of uh, the tragedy that happened in El Paso County, uh, Sheriff Elder refused uh, to serve red flag gun confiscation orders. And the shooter at the Club Q uh, tragedy, um, Democrats believe that he should have been red flagged. I'm not going to argue whether he should or shouldn't have. I don't think anyone should be red flagged without due pro. You know, I don't think anyone should have their guns taken away without due process first. I don't care who you are. Um, they're saying that since Sheriff Elder did not, uh, they want to make elected officials with the ability to red flag civilly liable um, for their um, uh, for not red flagging someone so essentially you throw out qualified immunity out the window for our police 
in addition to that, uh, let's see, what have I covered? I've covered uh, assault weapons bans, raising the age, 10-day waiting period, uh, red flag, ghost guns. So they are looking to ban ghost guns as well. So what is a ghost gun? It does not say boo, uh, contrary to popular belief. A ghost gun is a homemade firearm. Um, many libertarian-leaning folks love these 3D printers. Um, I have not been brave enough to use one yet. I'm afraid to shoot my hand off, but again, call me a FUD, whatever you want to call me. Uh, I still believe that you should be able to make one if, you, if your heart so desires. This is also going after companies like P80, Palmer 80, 80% uh, arms, where you can essentially manufacture a firearm without a serial number where it will never be on the books. Um, the shooter in the Club Q uh, massacre uh, used a so-called ghost gun, uh, so this is on their list as well. They're going after the American tradition of building your own firearms. Last and certainly not least is they're looking to expand Senate Bill uh, 21256, which eliminated preemption. So preemption, again, is that bill that I was talking about that now your HOA can decide what gun laws are dictating. Uh, in, in your in your community or your water board or town council or uh, county commissioner or whoever that go local governing body might be. They're going a step further. They initially wanted to add this in, in 2021 and they said it was it went too far. Uh, what they want to do is they want to give counties or localities the ability to ban sh uh, shooting on your private property. Uh, so now we not only have a gun issue, as we have a private property issue um, throughout the state of Colorado for, for localities that were willing to do that. Um, so that's what's coming down the pipe. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, if you're a gun owner in Colorado right now and you're not <laughs> geared up and ready to fight, I don't know what to tell you. We're in, the, we're in a true, uh, true battle. Uh, I mean, frankly, the assault weapons ban is obviously the worst. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's, that's, the, that's the Mac Daddy. And what I've been telling reporters and, and others who are asking is, like, why is, why is it now uh, that this is, this is happening? Why is it uh, in 2023 uh, that this is happening? Look, over the last 10 years, since 2013, Bloomberg's gun control lobby has dumped millions of dollars into Colorado's elections, not just on federal elections, not just on congressional elections, on state house races, on state senate races. Um, they have dumped millions and millions of dollars. And frankly, uh, while we have bad gun laws in Colorado, they haven't gotten the things that they've wanted, right? They've wanted an assault weapons ban. That's their big ticket item. And they've had the in theory, they've had the votes to do it, uh, but no one's been, you know, ballsy enough to, to take that stance. Essentially, in my opinion, the, the the gun control lobby is saying we've dumped, we've essentially paid you, we've we've given you, you know, all this power and access. It's time to pay the piper, um, and and this is them sitting back and this is their this is their payment um, is to steal your freedom. And so, what are we doing to fight back? So there's, there's a couple things that we're doing here. So number one, Lucas mentioned that we're, we're running petitions and, and, and lobbying our, our government using, using local activists, using, using a confrontational model, uh, not an access-based model. Um, unfortunately, the Rocky Mountain Gun Owners is kind of the only show in town when it comes to gun rights. Uh, the NRA has, has left Colorado um, they left in 2017. They still do their banquets and they'll still take your money, but they're not lobbying. And the red flag fight, I was telling them what I'm going to talk about about them, but here I go. So uh, in 2019 in the red flag fight, they did not file a lobbyist until the day it passed into law. Uh, since then, they have been nowhere to be found. Uh, their state director has left. Uh, their lobbyist lives in Kansas. And... Um, they're, they're just not here. Uh, GOA, Gun Owners of America, we do partner with those guys, but those guys yield to us. And um, so we're, we're doing this largely uh, based on, on our experience and the, and the experience of our members. Uh, so why is it important to get involved? So 
you know, we, we talked about signing petitions, contacting your local officials. I'm just going to be really bluntly honest with you. They have the votes. They have the votes in the House. They have the votes in the Senate. I, again, I'm just being very brutally honest. I don't know how we can stop it without a miracle. Um, you know, I still want you to sign petitions because that stuff matters. It really does. I need you to show up to uh, the state capitol and, and, and when it's time to testify. That stuff matters. It matters, not only matters at the, at the exact point, because we know what they're going to do, but it matters when we're when we're filing our lawsuits, and because we need them, we need to be able to show that they were told that this is what was going to happen, and they just blatantly ignored it. Uh, and the more that we can show that, the more important it is, and especially with petitions. And if we have a large number of, of those, that helps. But they have a supermajority in the House. Uh, I think that's by four votes. They lack a supermajority by one vote in the Senate. They have the votes to pass it. Governor Polis today said, he didn't say that he did not support it. He said that there were better ways to con combat gun violence. Uh, he specifically pointed to expanding red flag laws. Now, to me, uh, Pol let's, again, let's be honest with ourselves. Polis wants to run for president. Um, he wants to be the president of the United States. He wants to be America's first gay president. And... Uh, no, it's, it's it's true. That's 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 what he wants to be. He said that. He said that he wants to be America's first gay president. That is his goal. <laughs> oh, we got some conspiracy theorists. I knew I liked this crowd. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. We'll we'll talk after. Don't worry. Um, so uh, there is a possibility that this gets vetoed by Governor Polis. From our intel. This bill has, the assault weapons bill has already been filed. Um, we have no reason to believe that it has not been filed. Even Democrats are telling us that it's been filed. Um, so it's, it's in the hopper. It has not been given a bill number yet. Um, why do I bring up Governor Polis? There is a potential that he stops this. Um, he would need to convert uh, one Republican and and Kevin Priola in the in the in the Senate, as bad as he's been, he's just flipped from R to D. Um, I don't think he would vote for this. Um, so in theory, they would need to flip two votes in the Senate to to make it you know veto proof. Um, that's our best bet legislatively. I don't like those odds, to be very honest with you. Uh, that is not something that I'm willing to just sit back and say, well. You know, Daddy Polis, he's going to help us. I don't think that that's the case. Uh, Polis has been given 11 gun bills uh, on his desk. He signed every single one of them. There's no reason to believe he would not sign this. Um, so what can we actually do? Uh, and that, that answer is in the courts. Uh, I mentioned the Bruin decision, and I mentioned how strong that decision is. Um, and based on our previous experience in Superior and Boulder, we have no reason to believe that we would not be able to sue this into oblivion just like we did there. And, and not only sue it into oblivion, but get a temporary restraining order uh, filed. Uh, if you don't know what a temporary restraining order is, essentially you can file a TRO, temporary restraining order. This is something that's done to like rapists. Um, it really is like this. This is not necessarily used all that much in politics. You can file a TRO and get the law stayed, uh, meaning it's not enforced until the end of the case. Um, we again, we're talking about that Obama appointed judge when he ruled in our favor, that was on our TRO. Um, and he ruled in our favor because of that common, um, common use. Um, and he ruled and again, wrote, you know, with the high chance of winning, uh, I'm going to grant this TRO. Uh, so we have no reason to believe that we would not be able to have the same thing in the, in the state. However, this does not come without major cost. Uh, my job as a gun lobbyist today is different than it was a year ago. It is not haunting the halls and, and talking to politicians. My job is, look, I'll be, we've been accused of being fundraisers over the years, and that's all we're doing. Frankly, that's all that I'm doing right now is fundraising for a lawsuit. Our, our attorneys and our account staff believe that this lawsuit from start to finish is going to cost us anywhere from 750000 to upwards of a million dollars. And that's based on our legal fees, our expert witnesses, 
And frankly, I mean, if it's anything like our magazine ban, they're going to drag this out as long as they can and try to bleed us dry. Um, and that's the realities of it. We don't have a million dollars in the bank right now, being very openly honest. Um, we have the money to file, and we have the money to get a TRO. The rest is is up to me and, and, and my staff to raise the money to make sure that we have the money in the bank to, to file this and, and get it to the finish line. Um, so if you're not already an RMGO member, I, I implore you to be one. Um, before we take questions, uh, I know that we did have people that say that they weren't RMGO members. I'm not asking you to be a member. I'm just asking you to sign the petition. You can go to rmgo.org forward slash AWB. That's Alpha Whiskey Bravo. Uh, and you can go to that petition site and, uh, and be directed directly to it. You can sign there. It will then direct you to a donate page. If you can donate, even a dollar or two helps. Uh, the way I've been saying is if every gun owner in the state of Colorado just gave $5, uh, we would have the money to fight this. So um, with that said, I, again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, and I wish we had a better topic to speak on. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the reality of our state right now. So I will then, I don't know how long, how long have I been speaking? Oh, huh, cool, perfect. Just like just like planned. So I will open it up for questions because I know I just covered a ton of uh, a ton of stuff uh, that you know maybe you not may not be an expert on it, and so I'm happy to take questions. Yes, I'll get you next. Hold on, hold on. First question here. Oh yes. Oh, perfect. Hey, um, hey, is there any way to do the things you just said without going to the internet? Yes, I will give you my card, and we have a mailing address on there and just find me after and you can mail it to us uh, without having to put your credit card information on the internet. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so my question revolves around fundraising. I wanna share my experience with your organization. I am a member. Sure. How I became a member is I shoot over at the shootist. Yeah. And I said, hey, you know, Denver is making it real restrictive with gun laws. You, right. know, you can't go into a park now uh, being armed. And then if you leave your, your weapon in the car in order to be an appliance, when, when you go for your walk around the park, you're breaking the law by leaving your weapon in the car, I right. think. Right. You know? And so I said, is anybody doing anything about this? I'm asking the people at the shootist. And they said, check out Rocky Mountain Gun Organization. So I immediately went home. I paid my 30 bucks or whatever it was. And I'm a Thank member. you for your membership. I sent you a, 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 an email saying, hey, is anybody doing anything about this? You know, about the, uh, uh, and, right. and the only response I got was about 1,000 requests for more money. It's not the way to raise funds. Right. So we have sent, okay, so I'll just give you a little bit of background. And everyone deserves to know this. Um, I took over for my predecessor, Dudley Brown, two years ago. I have changed many of the ways that we operate uh, in just day-to-day -day operation. I, I really do try not to spam you every day. In hot fights like this, I'm going to spam you every day. Sorry, I, I have no choice but to do that. Um, but with that said, I've, I've updated our technology. If you need to get a hold of us, and we've tried to make this pretty apparent to our members and supporters, if you need to get a hold of us, when you respond back to those emails, it just goes to a dead link. They're marketing emails that we can't, it, it would mess up our server if we responded to those. If you need to get in touch with us, I'll give you my card, or the best way is to go to, is to email us at activism at rmgohq.org. And I'm, we're putting that on all of our material these days, uh, just so that our people are not frustrated when, even if it's as small as a billing error, uh, that they can get a hold of us in some way possible via the internet. And of course, you can always call our hotline. I've been answering the phones for the last three days because we have people sick. <laughs> but, but is anything being done about these local Denver laws or not? Long and short, he kind of. So in Denver, it's tough. Uh, where we can sue Superior and sue them, uh, again, full disclosure, for $75,000, it would cost me 500000 to sue in Denver. Um, we need favorable rulings in other places before we can then go and try to battle the city of Denver. Just being 100% honest, it's probably not the answer you want, but we need, we need precedent on the books to be able to sue a, a superpower like Denver. 
So, I don't know who's seen lately, but the ATF has ruled that pistol braces are now considered NFA items, mm-hmm. um, thus making like ownership of them very difficult without going through long legalistic process. Um, and if you don't go through that process, then owning them is a felony. But the ATF isn't knocking on doors, taking these away Correct. as of yet. Um, if this assault weapons ban were to pass, what's where's the enforcement going to come from? Are they going to actually enforce this? Like they have previous bans right. or will it be like the pistol brace ban okay so so i'm going to answer this in two questions uh so the at so for you those who don't know uh the atf just had a ruling last friday uh that you can no longer have a short barreled rifle with a pistol brace these were originally sold as pistols um and they were sold so the the brace essentially Okay, so now that I've said that, they have then said there's a workaround that have said that, you know, there's all these people making short-barreled rifles. If it's under 16 inches, it's it's a it's a short-barreled rifle. You have to register it and pay a $200, you know, stupid fee to the ATF to tell them that you have it. Um, and there's a waiting period to actually get it approved. And there's a waiting period. Depending on how you do it, it could be as quick as five days, or it could take as long as a year. Um, so uh, talking about enforcement on on the ATF side of things. So the ATF is a bureaucracy. When they when they when Trump uh signed into order his executive order to ban bump stocks, uh there was a report today that since that order has been um been filed, there was only like 520 something bump stocks turned in or seized. Bump stocks are a little different than pistol braces. Uh, most people don't know what a bump stock looks like. I lost mine in a boating accident. It's a real shame. Um, but most people don't know what bump stocks look like, um, and they're kind of hard to decipher from just a regular stock. On the pistol brace issue, I don't think they're going to come knock door to door and ask. You know, they saw that you bought a, you know, a Springfield Saint that was, you know, ten inches and. 10.7 inches. I don't think they're going to do the same. However, uh, it is likely uh, that ATF, the field agents, uh, whether it be in Colorado or Nebraska or whatever state that you live in, uh, those field agents do work uh, fairly closely with gun shops and gun ranges. And it is very likely, just like they did for bump stocks, most people weren't firing bump stocks at indoor ranges. Uh, but a lot of people do fire uh, short-barreled rifles with a pistol, or, sh- or a pistol with a with a uh, pistol um, brace on it. So likely, the ATF is going to ask gun shops to uh, stop those that are using um, the the pistol brace as soon as they see it, and they'll make them turn it in or whatever. If it's a gun sh- good gun shop, if you ever ever stop, just don't shoot there anymore. Anyway. Uh, so what does this have to do with our ban now? So I don't think they're going to go door to door. Again, the enforcement, like I said earlier, the enforcement is going to come uh, from traffic stops. It's going to become from, you know, being at the range. It's going to come from, you know, gun owners like to talk about their guns. I can't shut up about mine. I mean, I, I talk about all the stupid things that I've bought. I mean, I'm trying to buy a Barrett right now. It's like the only thing I talk about. Uh, if I haven't talked to you about my future Barrett choice, come talk to me because I like talking about it. Uh, I'm going to suppress it. And it's going to be great. Anyway, um, so how are they going to enforce it? I don't think they're going to go door to door. They don't have the manpower, uh, nor do we think the sheriffs are going to want to do that. Frankly, I don't even think the police chiefs are going to want to do that. Um, and the police chiefs are always more liberal than the sheriffs. Um, but with that said, uh, you know, it's going to come from tr- mainly traffic stops. I have a couple questions. Okay. So, first one, uh, have you tried to um, speak with uh, several businesses in Colorado Springs? Because I believe there are a lot of military and uh, weapon related businesses uh, even some of them is like academies because they prepare uh, military personnel maybe they will be interested in uh, banging this law or stopping this law yeah so in regards to businesses so I, i'm going to answer this in, in in threefold so 
Uh, in regards to gun shops, I'll speak on them first because that's kind of the most obvious. We are having a gun shop program that is going to make aware of the gun shops of what is happening. We're, all, we're putting a letter in the mail. It should go in the mail as, as early as Tuesday. Essentially saying, hey, we have material for you. Please distribute this at your shop. Uh, the second thing is, is like individual businesses uh, that may be more friendly to the cause. Is that how I understand it? No, I'm talking about big businesses, even uh, like military related, uh, like Lockheed Martin or something big, so big, like. Uh, I, I, so like Cabela's, I, I, Cabela, Academy. Co I, Academy or Cabela's, they're not going to care because this isn't going to affect their bottom line. So you don't think that they nope. will be affected? Nope. Okay, I got the idea. Uh, second question was, uh, so you were trying to stop it uh, through local laws. What about trying to stop it through Supreme Court? Uh, stop because, it through uh, what? Uh, Supreme Court. Uh, okay. Because I was told, I heard that uh, similar law were banned uh, in New York. Uh, right, yeah, uh, so that's the Bruin decision. So, so the the... The court system, I wish we could just immediately get to the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, we have to file that in the district court, and then it will be appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court, and then it just kind of depends if they even want to hear it. I mean, the Bruin decision, we thought for a while that they weren't going to hear it at all because they had like six gun cases coming through. They had assault weapons ban cases. They had mag ban cases. They had all these different cases coming through. So it was kind of like which one were they going to pick, Luckily for you know, for people that enjoy gun rights, uh, they picked the best one because it just covered so many topics and they changed the way that gun cases are looked at. So yes, our goal is to get to the Supreme Court, but unfortunately we can't. We It's not like we can just say, all right, Clarence Thomas, beat these people over the head today. I wish I could do that because he probably would happily do it. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions? So hopefully it's not a repeat of the same type of question that was just asked, but I'm wondering gun stores and ranges, like their ass is on the line. This is their, their Oh, livelihood. this is their livelihood, yeah. How seriously are they taking the fight? That's my first question. Um, Extremely seriously. So at least the good ones uh, know, know of us. Um, we got the we got the FFL letter, so we're sending not only to like the you know Centennial Gun Clubs and Triple J Armories and the Shootist and you know Shoot Indoors Broomfield or you know the ones that are more known. We're sending to you know home FFLs. We're sending to the ones that only process two or three guns a year. We're sending to every single one of them um, because frankly, even if they're only selling two or three guns a year, I mean they're still probably making you know three or four grand depending on. Our three or four guns a month. Sorry, they're still they're still making three or four grand a year. I mean that's that's not chump change. I mean even they would want to fight for this. So, um, you know even getting there, you know how do you how do you win in politics? You win off list money and people, um, and you know people and lists kind of go back to back. So it's um, we're trying to build lists of of like minded people uh, to raise that money and to and to be able to fight back on this. So you got another question? Go ahead. Uh, the second question was, you know, I live in Weld County. I'm very lucky to have Sheriff Steve Reams there. Who are other allies in this fight that are actually in positions of authority or power? Let's say, you know, I look at Illinois and I see all the sheriffs that say right. we're not going to go and enforce right. this, this rule. Do we have something like that or even close to it? So uh, I will say that sheriffs that for a long time um, were, were a little squishy on the gun issue, um, the ones that I've talked to, at least, uh, they have they have now said that look, we're we're willing to fight back against this. Uh, we're not going to enforce it. Um, we I was telling someone I can't remember who we actually we're sending another letter to every single sheriff in the state and asking them to sign a pledge not to enforce it. Um, and we're trying to get that on on record before even a committee meeting because. There's a lot of politics that goes into, like, even those stances that, like, the Chiefs of Police Association or the Sheriff's Association will take. They will take a weak stance because they're representing their entire body. If I can go in and say I have, I have, let's say 50 out of the 64 sheriffs have said that they are not going to enforce this, 
that speaks much higher volumes than saying, well, the, the Sheriff's Association, we have mixed feelings on this, and, you know, some of our membership, you know, appreciates the efforts, and, and many of them don't. That's a much more watered-down version of saying, you know, three-fourths of the, of, the, of the county, more than three-fourths of, of the county sheriffs are not going to enforce this if this becomes law. So, yes, we are working that angle as well. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Taylor, I really appreciate uh, the information that you're giving to us. It's kind of uh, frightening in a way. Um, I just wondered uh, what you're doing to uh, reach out to other people like ourselves that might not be aware of this. Um, I had a booth at the Tanner Gun Show uh, for the holidays, uh, the Thanksgiving weekend and the one right before Christmas. And I don't remember seeing you there, but I think uh, it might be a good opportunity. They to don't get, want us there. They do not. Well, I would talk to Tyler and say this is going to impact your business. You know? I assume that changes, uh, but in years past, they have, uh, they, we have just asked to, whatever the fight may be, uh, you know, on Red Flag, we asked to show up to gun shop. We asked for, we would pay the fee to, to be there and set up a booth or whatever it may be. And they've just said, ah, well, we don't really want politics in our gun shop, our gun shows, which is like, dude, you're selling guns. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, it doesn't, it, like, you're selling something that's extremely political. Uh, you had a question, and then is there any more? Okay. Oh, here. Whoa. So I'll, I'll go real quick, and then you're next. Okay, cool. Um, so you mentioned ghost guns and that they're trying to ban ghost guns. Can you elaborate on how they're trying to do that and how they would enforce that and to what level of ghost gun that would apply? So I don't know, uh, to be honest. Um, I don't know how they would enforce you know, you owning a 3D printer and downloading files off of the internet. I mean, I, I really don't know how they would enforce it. Um, I have not, I haven't seen, uh, that's one of the bills that I have not seen, the bill draft. And frankly, on the list of things, in my opinion, and our, uh, we've kind of ranked them, and that's at the lowest of for us. Um, most people don't, you know, print ghost guns. They're not crazy people like me and you. Um, I've printed a few. I haven't shot one yet. We'll, we'll, Right, exactly. So, um, so I don't know how that's going to be enforced. I'd be lying to you if I said that I did. I mean, to me, I, I have the same question as you. I don't, I don't know how they're going to enforce something that you can literally download off the internet. Right. Then you'll it'll probably be under the same guise as the assault weapons ban if they catch you with it. Right. Right. That's what I would assume. But again, I don't know. I I would be lying if I said that. You know. I would. I know exactly what they're what they're doing. So, do you know what the um, the stance of the sheriff in Jefferson County is around this? So we have a new sheriff in Jefferson County. Um, it's it's a it's a gal, isn't it? The new sheriff. I haven't looked into that. Since so well, I, I do know that we so we were asked to endorse uh, Brady, uh, who was the sheriff, who was the Republican running. Um, we stayed out of it. Uh, only because Brady was okay with enforcing red flag and he um, was okay with civil asset forfeiture, two things that are big deals to, to many people in this room. Um, civil asset forfeiture, I'm a weirdo. That's probably like my number three issue. I, uh, most people don't even know what civil asset forfeiture is. If you don't know what civil asset forfeiture is, it essentially means if you're stopped uh, by the police and they think you're in the commission of a crime, they can take all your things without due process and they can keep them pretty much forever. Um, in regards to the sheriff in Jefferson County, uh, the Democrat was endorsed by every town, which is the big gun control lobby. So presumably, um, he, she, it, they, whatever, you know, g gender fluid these uh, days. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't know what, uh, it's not a tranny, but it's, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm going sure about the pronouns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know the pronouns here, uh, but they would likely be um, uh, subject to, to enforce those. I, I would, I would presume, at least yeah. based on uh, based on the endorsements. Right. Gotta keep my guard up a little bit. Right. Any last questions? Okay, I will ask the last question. Okay. What can we be positive or optimistic about going forward? Is there any good news? And if not, make some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So I will say, I, I, I can only speak to the gun issue. Um, on the gun issue alone, we do have the Bruin decision. Um, that is... That's our that's our chance. I think that gives us the best chance to win as gun owners. Um, not only on you know this perspective assault weapons ban, uh, but on things like you know banning ARs in Denver and banning you know open carry in Denver, which I don't abide by, as you could probably tell. But sorry for the camera. I'm not carrying. Don't look. Um, yeah, but uh, for the things that just for gun owners going forward, there is a lot to be optimistic about. Um, if guns are your number one issue like mine, um, e there is a fight to be had. Um, it's just frankly mounting that fight and having the resources to mount that fight. That's our talk. Give it up for Taylor Rhodes. Thanks so much. <laughs>